Good morning, folks. We've got eye candy, growing sunspots, a tiny CME coming at Earth, and top science news, including our continuing look at the upcoming EGU General Assembly. Between a simultaneously erupting mini-filament and a pop off one of the departing northern active regions, we've got a little CME heading this way. I believe it's likely to be swept up and integrated into the coronal hole stream, which the Enlil spiral does a poor job of showing, but combined they should be mild to moderate in terms of geo-effectiveness, with the northern incoming sunspots presenting a much bigger watch right now. They've developed in a major way the last 48 hours and now present a large active region with beta-gamma magnetic class, and they are capable of producing solar flares. Eyes on this one. And now eyes to deep space, as we see a mini example of there being no islands in space. Usually we need to use radio astronomy to see the plasma bridges between galaxies, but here, those bridges are actually forming stars. If it looks like those streams are trying to connect the members of the small galactic cluster, you're right. Folks, the InSight lander has been one of the most successful Mars missions ever. It's the reason we know Mars' seismic activity is out of control and that the mantle is now active and mobile. And no, they were not wrong about that before. Mars awakening is part of its fate this cycle, but its solar panels are about to die due to dust accumulation. Their one hope is a random Martian dust devil could clear the panels, but if that doesn't happen, it will cease operation later this year. Folks, last August they discovered that the answer to why Jupiter's atmosphere is so much hotter than their models have guessed was the beaming of energy from the Jovian aurora equatorward. We wasted no time insisting that it works here to heat the atmosphere too, and as some of the first discoveries solidifying that fact came out last year, we went ahead and took the liberty of making the Earth animation version. Folks, there's going to be a whole session on this topic, on equatorward transfer of energy from higher latitude. I'm very used to science moving slowly, starting to get used to it moving faster the last few years, but this is on another level. The most important mechanistic session for solar climate forcing at the EGU will be this one. Next, stepping quickly away from the EGU to note the discovery of Dansgaard Oeschger events during marine isotope stage 6, which was about 200,000 years ago. The 1500 year cycle is of the utmost importance, so I was thrilled to see it make its way into the EGU Focus 2. For those who don't know, the most critical climate events, which many of you have never heard of, are indeed swept under the rug in the mainstream because they are 3 to 8 degree warming events that happen in less than a century, sometimes less than half a century. Not only are those tied to both solar super flare cycles, not only do they come with volcanic upticks, but that idea that the modern one degree of warming over the last 150 years is any kind of record or scary sort of goes right out the window. Folks, the equatorward traveling waves and the Dansgaard Oeschger events are enormously important aspects of the new observer supplement. Even without the foundational information found in the previous work supplemented by this new one, the coverage of this new era in solar forcing understanding and the inclusion of the 1500 year Dansgaard Oeschger cycle are thoroughly detailed. We greatly appreciate your support. Get our supplement at otf.cells.com. We've got shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.